January 5th, David Murrow. God's love for a man often feels like a great mystery until the man discovers his true treasure. More than anything, David Murrow was on the lookout for new ways to give men a church where their gifts and skills could be used and they felt comfortable. But when he first heard about the real life treasure map that could help men connect with Jesus, Murrow was skeptical at best. But the mysterious messages, a free trip to Greece, and more questions than answers drew him into the hunt. When the clues were added up, it turned out, if Murrow wanted to find the treasure map, he would have to go to Greece and talk with an old monk. So that is exactly what he did. On his third day in Greece at the Christian monastery, Murrow still did not know where this treasure hunt was headed. But as planned, he and a priest friend met the old monk. The monk claimed he could help Murrow find the treasure. And for Murrow, the treasure was how to do church so that men would get it and feel accepted. Eventually, the monk directed his new guest to his car. To Murrow's way of thinking, the old monk behaved a little strange compared to how Murrow thought a monk should act. In the monk's car, the three men rode through the countryside and they talked about Greece, but suddenly the monk swerved off the main road, bumped onto a tiny trail and slammed the car into park. Be quiet, he whispered. A black Mercedes had been following them. There it was, in the monk's car, the men lay low until the Mercedes passed. After a few minutes, they started up again, but the engine died out of gas. Insistent, the monk stayed with the car, gave Murrow and his friend a note written in Greek and sent them on foot to find some gas. For 30 minutes, they hiked and finally found a farm where they met an old farmer who, of course, did not speak English. Even so, Murrow and his friends successfully traded the note for a plastic jug of gasoline. They hiked across the uneven ground back to the car, hot and thirsty and tired. But the car and the monk were gone. Murrow and his friends searched the entire area, but no monk, no car, and it was getting dark. Now, frustrated and a little frightened, at least for the monk, the men needed a safe place to sleep. So they hiked back toward the same farm. When a pair of bright lights barreled down on them, they quickly realized it was the same black Mercedes they saw earlier. Murrow grabbed the priest and they dove into some very scratchy bushes. Quietly, they crawled, inching along the roadside under the cover of the weeds until they thought it was safe to stand and run back to the farm. Finally, the non-English speaking farmer welcomed them again, fed them and allowed them to bed down in a rat infested barn. Swamped by the odor of manure, Murrow wished he was anywhere else except, of course, in the sinister black Mercedes. Come morning, the two men set out for the monastery. They did not look forward to having to report that the poor old monk and his dead car had disappeared. About then, drivers of a horse-drawn cart pulled up and offered to help Murrow and his friend. So they hopped in the back among the bales of hay. But only minutes later, the same black car appeared and forced the car to stop. Merle found it hard to breathe. He and the monk buried themselves in the hay, but the two men from the Mercedes dug them out. They said the monk had sent them, but the monk had disappeared. Was he even alive? Unconvinced, Merle politely declined the offered ride. They would travel back the hard way, thank you very much, and they did. Finally, dragging themselves into the monastery, Murrow found the monk, alive and well. And when the old man asked Murrow to replay the events of the night before, Murrow, somewhat confused and frustrated, began to tell the old monk what they had been through. Hid from a mysterious Mercedes, ran out of gas, hiked to a farmhouse, returned to the car with the gas and the monk had disappeared, hid in a ditch, back to the farm, slept with rats, rode in a hay cart, discovered by strange men in the black Mercedes, dragged themselves back to the monastery to find the monk was perfectly fine. With patience, 
the monk revealed that the whole adventure had been the object lesson about how men learn. They must engage. He told Murrow that in America, everything is at the fingertips. In the West, you think that study is the key to discipleship. You listen to sermons, you gather in circles and read the Bible. Words go into your brain and are supposed to change your heart. Sometimes this works, but mostly it fails, especially with men. In the previous night, Murrow had been stripped of protection and communication and safety. Everything had been out of his control. The monk asked Murrow if it sounded like anyone he knew. Murrow drew a blank, so the monk explained. He left his throne in heaven and became utterly powerless, the old monk said. He was born in a barn and slept in hay. Men tried to kill him, but he fled to Egypt. The old monk was a very good teacher. He knew men learn experientially and are seeking a treasure. Matthew 13, 45 and 46 tells us, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. What kind of treasure are you searching for? Are you seeking only treasures of this world or eternal treasure? Are you willing to pray right now and ask God to show you his map for your life that leads to your true treasure? God's love for a man often feels like a great mystery until the man discovers his true treasure. So if you had the book of your life in your hand, we could probably go back and look at everything that's happened in our life. Obviously, it'd be thicker than this one, but every moment, every thought, every experience that we ever have is written in this book up until January 5th. So the question that I would have is, would you peek ahead? If the book, and we know that God has written this book for us and he knows everything that's going to happen, would you peek ahead? I say, you know what? What does happen next? Uh, my name is Russell, and it's January 5th, and we just heard a treasure map story uh, from David Murrow. Very interesting uh, that he would go on this search kind of for life and for the answers. And, you know, I think as men, uh, often that's what we search for, and we continue to look. Uh, for me, I don't know that I would look ahead. Um, I would like to know. It would be good to be able to plan to see what's going to be happening next, maybe for insurance policies or whatever. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and live my life uh, through faith. And you know, uh, this uh, something comes up in uh, 2 Corinthians, actually, um, chapter 5, verse 7, and it says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. And I find that really interesting uh, as you know, I think about myself, and maybe you think the same thing as what's next for us. But uh, I can tell you this, um, as we continue to grow in our faith as men, we need to remember that God has our map, our treasure map, if you will, all lined out. He knows every step, every turn, every conversation, every thought, every wish, every event has already been designed by God. So my challenge for today men is let's just walk by faith let god lead us in the decisions that we make every single day let's make sure that god is stepping in front of us so we can follow his wish for us and things will turn out absolutely fantastic have a great day